It's time to get processing in SETI Astro Suite. Here's a narrowband workflow. Welcome to SETI Astro. In making this video, I found uh, numerous bugs and, and did a lot of fixing. So if you haven't gotten the latest version, you're going to have to go get uh, version 2.7.5. So make your way over to SETIAstro.com. And now when you click get it here for SETI Astro Suite, it's going to take you to the, the GitHub repository I have for this. And it'll have all my releases. And now that has a, a history of releases. You can see I was going through a lot of bug fixing as I was making the video. Uh, but what's really great about the new version and having it on the repository is now there's an update feature. Uh, you can check for updates while you're in it. And when you first open it, it's also going to check for updates. So here we are in City Astro Suite. Uh, there are there are some other updates in here. Uh, there's a preferences if you uh, want to adjust any of your preferences are in there. Uh, but let's go ahead and, and get to processing. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is just kind of do each of the, the narrowband filters first. We'll be doing the uh, Eagle Nebula. I think it's one everybody's familiar with. So here's uh, my H alpha loaded in. We can do an, an auto stretch on. And uh, you know, the, the basic flow we're gonna do with, with each filter is sharpen, denoise, remove the stars. And then we'll push that image over to a slot. So I'm in Cosmic Clarity, sharpen, denoise. I like a, a 3.5 for my PSF and I'm gonna give it like a, a 0.7 on both the stellar and non-stellar. And we're just gonna execute it and then we're going to denoise it. Okay, sharpening is done. I'm just gonna click on the, the denoise radio button, give it like a, I don't know, like a 0.8 or 0.7, depending on how noisy your data is, and just click execute. And now that it's denoised, we can go ahead and remove the stars. So now I'm gonna go ahead and click the remove stars button. It's gonna ask, is the current image linear? And it is, yes. It's gonna to have to do some normalization in the background for Starnet. Starnet's going to open and run. All right, when Starnet is done, it's gonna ask where I wanna save the, the star's only image. So this is gonna be Eagle H Alpha stars only. And that was saved successfully, and now it's gonna import the starless. Okay, here's our linear starless image. Now I'm going to go ahead and go to statistical stretch. You can see we're still linear. I'm just going to go ahead and do the standard uh, 0.25 on, on this particular image. It may be a little heavy in the core, but this is just a, a quick video. So now that we have a, a non-linear H alpha image, I'm actually going to copy this over to slot one. So now if we click on slot one, you can see here, here's our image. So I'm gonna go back over to Cosmic Clarity and I'm gonna open a new image, our O3. Here's our O3 and I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna do sharpen, denoise, remove the stars, uh, put it in statistical stretch and do the stretch. So I'll be back when that's all done. All right, and this is something good to look at. Here's the stretched oxygen. We could already tell that the dark part's pretty bright because the, the medians were stretched the same. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and um, darken the oxygen. I'm gonna bring it down to like a, like a 0.2 and then maybe bring it over to uh, curves a little bit just to brighten kind of the, the core structure but keep the, the rest of it fairly, fairly dark. And now that that's applied, I'm gonna go ahead and, and put it in slot two. And if you could tell, I, I think that there's a gradient in the oxygen as well that we could see here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit ABE. Um, sure, we'll, we'll kind of exclude this area here and we'll, uh, we'll tell it to give it a go. All right, that is much, much, much better. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put that into slot two. All right, oxygen's done. Now I'm gonna move on to sulfur. All right, now that we um, did the stretch on the sulfur after the sharpened denoise and removing the stars, I can see that there is 
some amount of gradient there as well. So I'm going to go ahead and open ABB. I'm going to kind of protect this whole area because we really just want a, a linear polynomial gradient here. So poly degree one, we definitely want it smooth, maybe like a 0.9 um, and process. All right, now that the gradient's removed, I think we can boost the sulfur a little bit as well. I'm gonna just go over to curves and uh, get kind of like a little contrast going here in, in sulfur two, just to kind of uh, boost that when we actually combine the S, H, and O. I'm gonna click apply curve. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and put this in slot three. Okay, now we have our H alpha, oxygen, and sulfur in slots one, two, and three. Let's hop over to the perfect palette picker and we'll load our H alpha from slot one. We'll load our oxygen from slot two. And we'll load our sulfur from slot three. Let's go ahead and create palettes. Uh, we also have to uncheck linear data. And right off the bat, you know, I want to look at, at 4x. I think this is going to be a, a good palette with lots of reds and kind of greens and blues. So I think... Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and, and go with this one. I'm going to say push final palette for further processing. And now if we go into things like curves and stuff, we, we should be able to see it. And I want to add a little, a little contrast here. Our, our image is looking a little soft. And you can play with uh, things like, you know, there's there's a remove green. Maybe we just want to remove a little bit of that green tinge. So maybe like a, like a 0 0.3. All right, that, that added some nice blues down in there. And I think with this case, with how bright the core is, I, I think we could actually use a little touch of saturation to help with that. And then I want to kind of highlight some of the broader features in here too so if i go to the clay tool the clah okay the adaptive histogram tool is very very strong uh so we do want some broader features in the eagle you know kind of some of these bigger structures so we kind of want the, the tiles uh, you want to adjust those so you can start seeing it match with the structures you want to see and obviously we don't we don't want that much strength right so maybe just a little here um a point four we, we could we could put that on another thing you'll probably want to try is some um, frequency separation so let's go ahead and uh split the frequencies here a little bit more so we can start seeing the structure of the eagle down in there and then scale sharpening does the exact same thing as unsharp mask. So we'll give it a little of that and a little bit wavelet. And we'll just apply that and see how it changes this. That added quite a bit of uh, contrast to it. So maybe we don't want quite as much. All right, and then you click combine and then apply the changes. Okay, and now here's our current image. And we did do a lot of different sharpening and stuff in the, in the process here. So now might actually be a good time to reapply some denoising. So I'm just gonna go back to Cosmic Clarity and hit it with another round of denoise. This is completely you know, optional. Some people don't mind a bit of noise in their image. Some people like their image is really smooth. All right, with that done, uh, you know, there's maybe, maybe just a bit more uh, curves, right? This is just completely your preference, how you like uh, to see your images. Maybe a little additional contrast in there. And I'm going to go ahead and save the image now. Eagle4x.tiff. 
I'll go 16 bit is fine. The next thing to do is create our stars. So I'm gonna to go to the narrow band RGB star combination tool. And we saved our H alpha stars, O3 stars, and our S2 stars. And we wanna enable the star stretch. I'm just gonna say preview the combined image. And here's everything that uh, StarNet had pulled out. It looks like there was some structure in the eagle that was um, also removed via StarNet. So I'm actually gonna pull up the morphological tools. And now, now this is where erosion is gonna make a lot of sense. Probably, probably just a single one. You can see all our stars there. We just wanna shrink the dim ones and we'll, we'll click apply. All right, there's our stars now. Now I'm gonna go ahead and copy that to slot one. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open our Eagle 4X. And here was our starless image. Now I'm gonna click the add stars back from a slot and slot one. And look at that, look how beautiful that is. We didn't uh, overpower it with a bunch of tiny stars because we did that morphological transformation. The eagle's nice and bright in there. And if we zoom out, you can see all this, this wonderful nebulosity all throughout, all throughout the image here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and save this. This is gonna be our final eagle 4X at TIFF. And 16-bit is fine. And now this is uh, perfect to take into something like Affinity or GIMP or anything else if you if you wanted to do some final tweaks. And again, here's our, our gorgeous Eagle Nebula in the, in the Forex palette. Uh, just just looking just looking great. All done uh, in City Astro Suite. Uh, you didn't have to pay for any of this one, uh, so. I think I'll make a one-shot color uh, RGB workflow video next, but I, I hope this one helps some people uh, navigate SETI Astro Suite a little bit better, how to manipulate things, how to go about things. Uh, so please comment, like, and subscribe.